worst fears more than likely is an injury to your child if your child gets hurt. Uh, but what if an injury does occur and that injury is due to someone else's carelessness? How do the courts handle that? Well, to break it all down, we have Tom Sinus from Sinus Dramos Law Firm. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Todd. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for asking and uh, thanks for joining us. So, uh, I'm assuming kids getting injured, well, they're minors, so they can't take people to court. I mean, kids can't sue people. Uh, so how do courts handle this? Great place to start and a great question. Uh, you're obviously correct that kids can't take those type of actions. And so we have to have procedures in our court rules and our laws that allow claims on behalf of minors to be prosecuted. And so mo most basically what we have is a system where adults can be appointed by a court to act on behalf of a child to protect the child's interests in pursuing a legal claim. Um, and the key there is both an adult and one who is appointed by the court. And here we generally have two categories. We have those who are conservators. These are people who are appointed by the probate court, typically to handle financial matters for, for people who can't act on their own. But more commonly, uh, cases on behalf of minors are pursued by what we call next friends. And these are people appointed typically by the circuit court at the outset of a lawsuit uh, to handle the claim on behalf of the child during uh, the lawsuit. But the basic idea there are different titles, of course, but you have adults and they're vested with powers by the courts and they can then prosecute the, the legal claim on behalf of the child. What about the rules that adult court has? I mean, are, are the rules the same when there's a child involved? Well, that's a really good question. Generally speaking, the answer in terms of the rules of court, here we're talking about cases on behalf of um, injuries to children. The rules of court and the rules of evidence, they're all the same uh, for cases involving injuries to children as they would be for injuries for adults. But there is one really important procedural rule that is different, and that has to do with what we call the statute of limitations. This is the, the, the time deadline that people have for pursuing their claims. We, we allow children's claims to be what we call told, meaning while children are minors, getting back to your earlier point, we can't expect them to be able to make timely decisions about their legal rights because adults are supposed to be doing that for them. And so the statute of limitations in a personal injury case for an adult is generally three years, but we suspend that, we toll that for children uh, as far as in, in, a, in a general sense, that suspending and tolling goes until their 19th birthday. And there are some nuances and exceptions there, but the idea there is that the time deadline rule, uh, we give, of course, children some flexibility in the event that a, an adult is not acting for the child, uh, as we talked about a moment ago. You know, a lot of these cases sometimes involve appearing in court. And I don't think any parent really wants their child to appear in court. I mean, it's not a goal. Uh, what about protection for them? I mean, do they have to uh, appear and testify or, or what's in place to protect them? Well, that's an, an also an excellent question. So do they have to appear and testify? The answer is they very well may have to. Um, not necessarily all the time. Uh, but there certainly isn't a rule that says that they they don't have to, particularly uh, in cases involving serious injuries to children who are a bit older. But I think the other uh, gist of your question is what kind of oversight do we have in the court system to make sure that the decisions that are being made with regard to settlements on behalf of children, how do we make sure that that's being done responsibly? And there we kind of come back to where we started. There we have court oversight of settlements on behalf of children, meaning that just because a, an adult is, is vested with the ability to prosecute the case doesn't mean the adult can just settle the case without court supervision. So uh, cases involving children can have court supervision in terms of their settlements, both in probate court and in circuit court, and sometimes in both courts. The idea here though, in general, 
is that whatever the settlement is that is proposed on behalf of the child has to be presented to the judge and the judge has to go through a process to make sure that the proposed settlement is is fair and is in the child's best interest. Sometimes that process can involve uh, what's called a guardian ad litem, somebody who is appointed uh, to look directly at the proposed settlement and ask whether it is in the best interest of the child, a neutral sort of third party, if you will, uh, but not in every case. But in every case, we do have the idea that any settlement on behalf of a child has to be approved by a court. And then lastly, uh, the settlement proceeds that go towards the child settlement, those proceeds are also commonly put into what's called a conservatorship, which is a special court supervised account where the money cannot be accessed uh, by the child absent some uh, special uh, circumstances. There are other ways that monies on behalf of children are administered. But again, the basic theme here is we have court oversight, both over the, the, the proposed settlement and how the funds are handled. Well, they may seem on the surface to look similar injury cases between uh, for adults or children. But as you can tell, there are a lot of finer points uh, that you'll need to know if, God forbid, that ever happens to you and your family. Tom, where can people get more information about contacting you? Uh, they can find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. They can shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com, or they can call us in West Michigan at 616 301 3333.